The other part of sleep disturbance is it's also very closely associated with a number of other conditions. Fatigue, cognitive dysfunction, memory delay, and problem solving. Interestingly, there have been some findings recently about sleep apnea in the spinal cord injured population and the fact that apneic events, periods of time when you stop breathing at night, can trigger an endorphin release that may actually contribute to what we call neuroplasticity. Your brain has certain areas that do certain things, right? Your spinal cord has areas that send messages out to your body to do certain things. When your spinal cord's damaged, those messages aren't going out and your body's not doing those things. And so your brain in those areas starts to atrophy a bit. It's not being used. What we have identified in some preliminary research is that when there's an apneic event, there's an opportunity for us to expand the neuroplasticity or the capabilities of the brain to start using those areas again or extending the use of the areas of the brain that are still working. We see the applicability of this in perhaps being able to test it in other veteran populations, not only paralyzed veterans with spinal cord injuries, but also the traumatic brain injury population. There's another excellent example of where sleep disturbance and sleep disorders are very closely associated.